This is how you carry on a successful defensive strategy. Today, we're fighting an exciting 1v1 DI battle with larger battlefields with 40 units each. The rules are fight spam, no dogs, no artillery. Let's start right away with a rough description of the army compositions. So my army, we could say, is divided into pieces, into central pieces, and in three line. It's three line deep. First line made of Sicilian levies of different kinds. Right behind them we have two real swords. I'm bringing these two real swords because they have three javelins each and they are an extremely good unit. They also have four speed, which is crazy. And then behind all of this, I've got the elite hoplites. Those are the Syracusan guard. This is the Syracusan guard. On this other side, I have the two real spears. Second line, just right behind them, I have the Sicilian hoplites. Those are like the, the cheapest hoplites the Syracusan can bring, but they are mid-tier hoplites. And right behind, we have the elite swords, the defensive formation swords. Um, which are the Syracuse and heavy infantry. As support infantry, we, uh, we have some Pezoi Bretoi on this side. This unit is a definitely interesting unit if used as a support unit, and I think the best use for this uh, unit is on the, on the flank because they can form square formation and uh, repelle equites, so they should be good against cavalry. But they're still a cheap, a pretty cheap unit. To support against the cavalry, we got the um, Gastrafetes. Those are kind of crossbows, not really crossbows, but similar to crossbows. And on this side, we also have um, a Sicilian colony slavy. This is the che cheapest spear they've got. As for cavalry, I've got my general. Of course, this is a pretty good unit of, um, of cavalry, 52 morale, pretty high. And, but for the rest, I have this Ipaconti Stai, um, this Greek Javelin Cavalry, which I basically am using for because of their speed and so, you know, to scout ahead and see what's, what they have. For the Roman army, we can say he has a lot of different legionaries, a lot of different cohorts, so his army is very, is very cool, I really appreciate it. I wouldn't suggest it. To be fair, I don't think this is an optimal Roman army, but it's it was definitely super cool to see all these different uh, Romans. He has some Velites to skirmish, some extremely expensive and heavy cavalry, Rorari to support, and um, as cavalry, he's got, of course, the camels and the Equites, who are mostly hidden here, but um, yeah, you can see he has some um, Equites. My plan for this battle is very simple, engaging the levies first to get the, the Roman legionaries in melee and then, as you can see right now, just push my elite hoplites right away. The reason why I'm doing this is because I saw he's, pulling, he's putting legionaries in the first line already, which is extremely good and I think it's a pretty convenient fight for me. What I want to do is really only engage this side and slowly but surely destroy the legionaries because these legionaries has no, have no chance against my hoplites so I really want a slow grinding battle while I'm holding back all of these here forcing him to use all of these archers and velites right away because he has less units but not really using them perfectly of course because most of my army isn't in melee. He's shooting this Alplight here. It's taking some damage, but not really too much. Uh, but it's a good target, he's shooting the unshielded side. But here, you can see my army is doing really well. It's trying to disengage on some part, but uh, will most definitely keep on charging. My plan is a defensive strategy. I really want to keep on grinding until I have an edge on my opponent until it feels like he's running out of units and he is forced to stretch his army out because he's losing this this flank here so he needs to stretch out he needs to start fighting when when i feel like i have a slight advantage on him i will pull a counter attack and start damaging and actually threatening the the flanks i'm attacking with my whole plights on this other side which also is something i really do want I wanted to hold back a little bit, of course, because these Oplites aren't the best Oplites, but definitely this is still a pretty good engagement for me. He has a lot of units engaged to this uh, very cheap Oplites. 
so that is fine. On the flank, there isn't much going on. He's starting to move slightly on this flank, but uh, it seems like so far he's only protecting. But as soon as he starts losing this flank, he will have to start engaging somewhere else because he's not going through his all plights here. He is pulling back a little bit uh, with his legion. He's, just, he's trying to preserve these units, and this is a very good move. He's very good. He's very smart in you know doing this. Look at this unit, it's slightly engaged, I'm stuck on the Velites, I'm not really killing the, the Legionaries, which is pretty, it's a pretty good tactic. I'm starting to push, I found a little gap here, I'm starting, I'm starting to push through this side. He sees an opportunity with his cavalry to kill my uh, crossbows, he kills a little bit of my crossbows, but really not enough. My cavalry, my general is there to support, my spears are there to support. I got a two reels as well, from I pulled back from the front line. This cavalry is gonna get stuck, I have my cavalry hidden here, so I'm prepared for whatever he was holding back here. I thought, honestly, he had more, but he only had cavalry in one Rorari. I definitely don't suggest doing something like this. You either have a, a very big and impactful um, pocket of units, or otherwise it's, it was probably better off to just keep them behind here, just to guard um, the rear of this temple, just to make sure I couldn't flank him from this side and start attacking the rear. Ed is starting to attack with his Astati Samnitici. Of course, you see this op the opportunity to use his defensive formations on my Thurios Ozonoi. These Thurios Ozonoi are extremely good, but of course, fighting formations is a little rough for them. And same for these ladies here, you can see they are wavering already, but still, Astati Samnitici, they are not in formation yet but they will probably go information after this. And my Turios engaged the only Rorari. He's, he tried to seize the opportunity to hit the rear of my hoplites here. My, these hoplites are already red for some reason, but he sees the opportunity. I don't think this is worth it. Even if he breaks, I have some reserve here and also I have my cavalry coming to kill his equitas, so definitely not worth it. On this side, my Turios should be able to win the Rorari. Uh, I'm not sure though. But with the support of my crossbows, once I get rid of this, um, this pocket will break. This is a slow fight, an extremely slow fight, but this is a good fight for me. Um, I mean, this cohort Prima has lost 60 men and has only killed 63, which is still pretty good, but that is, that is a very expensive unit, so you want to have more than that. I still have a lot of reserves on this side, but this is definitely my weakest side, but I still believe this is not weak enough for him to actually start uh, charging. I think he should have chosen one side and, and only focus on that side. But he's doing really well with his camels. This charge, he didn't lose anything, but he killed 26, which is good. These reserves are needed to both support the center and the this flank here. And he has a little bit more units and better units than mine on this on this flank. A whole plate center can be can be exploited in many ways. Uh, for example, you could have stretched something here, go through and force me to pull in some of the reserves. I clear this pocket completely and now this unit will start moving behind. Um, this is the beginning of the counter-attack phase because I see he's completely stretched out, like he's engaged. Each of his units is engaged somewhere on this, on this very thin and long front line. So I know he doesn't have a lot of reserves. I know he doesn't have much to protect the rear. On this side, these camels are getting shot by my crossbows, but they are still pretty, it is doing pretty well. 72 kills, and he's only lost, well, he's only lost, he's lost 12, which is still a lot. But as, as long as these camels are around, it's fine because I can't really use my cavalry. All of these kills are on legionaries. So this is extremely good. 174 kills on legionaries is extremely good. Again, decisive or not, this was an extremely good engagement for me because he forced them to lose a lot of units in the center and he forced them to stretch his line so, so further, so thin, that now his flanks are super weak and his rear doesn't even exist anymore. I mean, my units here are just basically free to attack the rear of these units. And I'm starting to use my um, more flexible and faster units to go around. I wanna be very careful here, 
because you still got the, the cavalry and these units are not, well, I mean, the Rorari are super soft, but um, this Astati Samnitici can hold for quite some time. This is a pretty decisive defensive strategy. Um, I timed my counterattack perfectly. The match so far played according to my, my timing, according to my will. Uh, I'm forcing him to take engagements that I want and by doing so I'm forcing him to, to take other engagements that he really didn't want to take. By stretching so thin he cannot micro well enough on this again extremely wide front so uh, he didn't see my cavalry charging the, the camels so the camels are getting wrecked right now. Uh, my crossbows are in the exact in the perfect spot to support my uh, my cavalry, I guess they're out of ammo now and they're gonna charge in melee But uh, they support and they shot the camels quite a bit uh, Which was my only way to kill the camels really because my cavalry is not good enough The flank, the right flank is now collapsing as well So even if this engagement here results in a defeat for, for my army uh, I will counterbalance it with this flank that, that eventually will be a victory for me and of course, the Zol outer flank here is a complete mess, uh, and I will eventually win. And of course, the rear is now free from uh, is now free for my cavalry to charge. So uh, this is looking extremely good for me. I'm exploiting the holes to start hitting hitting the rear of these units here. I think this units also fought in the very first engagement, and then he pulled the mech. He switched the the units on the front line. As you can see, this flank now is completely collapsed. And again, this is what you want to do if you're having a defensive strategy. You want to really take a slow fight, grinding fight. And, and when the time is right, when you, th when you see the opportunity, you start uh, charging from the flanks. There's a lot of units still left on, on my side. And uh, these poor Romans are definitely not going to like what is coming now. The horde of Sicilians. And yeah. Close victory. This battle would have played completely differently if he used his Rorari in the in the front line. Because I wouldn't have used my my Hoplites there. I would have kept the Hoplites in the third line. And I would have engaged my two rios, my light units. But I wouldn't have engaged my Hoplites because that would have been a waste. My elite Hoplites, they did 297 kills. This one made only 72. You can see for most of them, the kills are pretty good. My Levis also did pretty well. The the cheaper Hoplites, of course, didn't do much. My Thorax Source, one, this one made 355 kills, which is pretty Pretty crazy. My cavalry did really well. The crossbows. I'm not really, not really a fan of the crossbows. On this side, the, the Romans also did pretty well. The Velites did okay. Archers, not enough. Don't take these archers. Not worth it. The Equites didn't do anything. Unfortunately, they got they got ambushed while they were doing their ambush. Camels did okay. -ish. Rorari, they just died. Thanks to Asim for playing these battles. Bye bye. See you next battle. Bye.